Pythagoras' theorem states that for any right-angled triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse, that's the side opposite the right angle, is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides. So for this triangle, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where the length c is the hypotenuse. Simply put, there are combinations using three squares that when they are joined together form a right angled triangle and that the combined area of the smaller squares is equal to the area of the larger square. The most common example is a 3x3 three three square where the area is equal to 9 square units, a 4x4 four four square where the area is equal to 16 square units, and a 5x5 five five square where the area is equal to 25 square units. And of course, the area of the larger square, 25, is equal to the sum of the areas of the other two squares, which is equal to 9 add 16. Notice that these three squares have formed a right angled triangle in the middle, which is often referred to as a 3, 4, 5 triangle, where the sides of the triangle are 3, 4 and 5 units respectively. And of course, the right angle is opposite the longest side, which is the 5 units. And this, of course, is the hypotenuse. Over the years, since Pythagoras, mathematicians have provided proofs for this theorem. In this video, I'm going to look at a couple of these proofs. The first is a more visual representation, whilst the second draws on a more algebraic approach. First of all, I'm going to draw on the work of the Greek mathematician Euclid. A word of warning. This is not an in-depth look at the workings of his proof. There are other videos out there that do this. It is more of a visual understanding of how he was trying to show that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We'll replace 3, 4 and 5 with the sides a, b and c. Therefore, the areas of the three squares are now a squared, b squared and c squared. I'm also going to label the other vertices, that's the corners of the triangle, A, B and C. We generally use capital letters for the vertices. Also note that the vertex A is opposite side A, vertex B is opposite side B, and vertex C is opposite side C. I'm now going to label the other vertices. Next. I'm going to add some lines that join some of the vertices. I'll begin by joining A to F and C to D. And finally, a line from vertex C that is perpendicular or at right angles to the line AB and DE. And where the line cuts DE, I'll label this L. And where the line cuts AB, I'll label this M. I'm going to shade in two triangles, ABF and BCD. Now Euclid was able to prove that these two triangles are congruent, that is, they are the same. And both are half the area of the square BCGF and half the area of the rectangle BDLM. And used this subsequently to prove that the area of the square BCGF has the same area as the rectangle BDLM. So in theory, the combined area of these two triangles should fit exactly into the square BCGF and the rectangle BDLM. Well, let's use some graphical manipulation to show this. We'll begin by focusing on the area of the square. If I rotate and move the triangle BCD to join the triangle ABF along their longest sides, we have a parallelogram. I can now break up the area of the parallelogram to fill in the square, which it does. So each triangle is half the area of the square. Now let's see if these two triangles fit exactly into the rectangle. So here's the two triangles. This time, I'm going to rotate triangle ABF. 
we now have another parallelogram. And I can now break up the parallelogram to fit in the rectangle. So, by using the two triangles, we can see that the area of the square BCGF is equal to the area of the rectangle BDLM, which in this diagram is equal to A squared. Let's remove the lines CD and AF and add two new lines, BK and CE. I'm now going to shade in two new triangles, ABK and ACE. Again, these triangles are congruent. Similarly, Euclid proved that these two triangles were half the area of the square CAKH and the area of the rectangle AMLE, proving that these two areas are equal. So the combined area of these two triangles should fit exactly into the square CAKH and the rectangle AMLE. Well, let's have a look, starting with the square. I'll rotate the triangle ACE to form a parallelogram with the triangle ABK. And by cutting up the parallelogram, we can see that it fits perfectly into the square. Now for the rectangle. Let's bring up the triangles again and watch what happens. This time, I'll rotate triangle ABK to make a parallelogram. And now we'll show that the area of the parallelogram is equal to the area of the rectangle AMLE. So using the areas of the two triangles, we can see that the area of the square CAKH is equal to the area of the rectangle AMLE which in this diagram is equal to b squared. And now we can see that the area of the square ABDE, which we know to be c squared, is equal to the area a squared plus the area b squared. And this, of course, is Pythagoras' theorem. It could be argued that with using graphics, I could just cut up the squares to fit into the rectangles but I thought it would be interesting to have a crude look at Euclid's work to provide a visual relationship between the areas of the squares BCGF, CAKH and ABDE. But let's look at another proof. Here's a square. I'm going to place a smaller square inside this square. Notice that the smaller square is rotated and that its four vertices just touch the sides of the outer square. Now let's add some labels to the sides. I'm going to label this length A and this length B. This also means that these lengths are A and B and so on around the sides of the larger square. And I'll label the side of the smaller square, C. So we now have two squares, the larger square, where each side is A plus B, and a smaller square, where each side is equal to C. To prove Pythagoras' theorem, we are going to find the area of the larger square using two calculations. The first calculation involves multiplying the length and the width of the larger square. Now the length of each side is a plus b, so the area is equal to a plus b multiplied by a plus b. We now expand the brackets. a multiplied by a, which is a squared, add a multiplied by b, which is ab, add b multiplied by a, which we can also write as ab, add b multiplied by b, which is b squared. And this simplifies to a squared add 2ab add b squared. Now for our second calculation. I'll colour in the smaller square. We can see that the area of the larger square is made up of four right angled triangles, which are in blue, and the smaller square, which is yellow. So to find the area of the larger square, 
We calculate the area of the four triangles and add this to the area of the smaller square. The area of a triangle is half the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. So that's a half A multiplied by B. But we have four lots of these. So that's four lots of a half A multiplied by B, which we can write as A multiplied by B over 2. We then add the area of the square, which is C squared. And this simplifies to 2AB add C squared. So we have two calculations for the area of the larger square, which means that these two calculations must be equal as they are working out the same area. Therefore, calculation 1 must equal calculation 2. We now have an equation a squared add 2ab add b squared is equal to 2ab add c squared. We can see that there is 2ab on either side of the equation. If I subtract 2ab from one side, I must also do this for the other, so they effectively cancel each other out. We are then left with a squared add b squared is equal to c squared. And there is Pythagoras' theorem. So there is a couple of ways of looking at proving Pythagoras. I will do another video looking at using Pythagoras. But I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching.